When we think of giant flying creatures, our minds usually go to the ancient flying reptiles. But 7 million years ago in Argentina, South America's animals would have lived under the shadow of their own giant flying creature, a monster bird known as Argentavis magnificus. Argentavis could have rivaled some of the largest pterosaurs like pteranodons in size, yet lived in a time when most animals would have taken on forms that would be familiar to us today, and some of the other giant relatives in its family only went extinct as little as 10,000 years ago. Argentavis was massive, and was probably the largest bird to have ever flown. It weighed as much as a human, and a large one would be able to look you in the eye if standing on the ground. Its wingspan would have been around 6 meters, making it twice the size of even its largest condor relatives. However, it would have shared the condor trait of having relatively short wings for its body size, so its wingspan was not as you would expect for a 70 kilo bird. For instance, one prehistoric bird known as Paleogornis may have slightly surpassed Argentavis in wing length, stretching beyond 7 meters, but had a much smaller and lighter body. Although its closest living relatives are New World vultures, it was actually from a different and now extinct family known as Teratornithidae that inhabited the Americas throughout the Miocene up until the late Pleistocene. And although some members like Argentavis lived in South America, by and large the family is actually better known from North America. Argentavis is only known from fragmentary remains, and most of what we know about this group of animals is actually from another Teratorn called Teratornis meriami. This is because it is one of the many victims of the La Brea tar pits, and so it is known from almost a hundred individuals. Teratorns looked a lot like condors, but were nearly always larger. Even Teratornis, although much smaller than Argentavis, would have been slightly larger than both the Californian and the Andean condor, the largest living vultures. Although they were very similar to condors in body shape, their long beaks and wide gapes are actually better compared with birds like eagles, and so they may have actively hunted a lot more than any living vultures. And Argentavis also had one of these terratorn beaks, with a gape so wide that it would have been capable of swallowing an animal the size of a rabbit whole. It is fitting that Argentavis was related to condors, as they are among the largest flying birds today. Condors evolved to such large sizes because many of them habitually scare birds of prey and other predators off their catches to steal it for themselves. And they have been observed scaring away animals as large as wolves. In order to do this successfully, they need to be very large. Also, provided there are no limitations to their body size due to their lifestyle, animals usually trend to getting larger because it makes it harder for them to fall victim to predation and the scavenging lifestyle of condors is less restrictive to large body sizes than other active hunting birds of prey, as they don't need to be quite as agile or aerodynamic. Another reason that condors have less size restrictions is that they are masters of soaring. Once in the air, they rarely flap their wings and allow updrafts, produced when air is blown over hills and mountain ridges, to lift them or let themselves be carried by rising warm columns of air. This is the reason why vultures tend to have short but fat wings, as this adaptation is best for being caught in updrafts, and is also why you see vultures circling, as they are climbing up inside an air column using their excellent eyesight to spot carrion from a distance. Argentavis would have been perfectly built for gliding between different updrafts as well. Due to its sheer size, and that analysis of its flight muscles compared to body weight shows that it would have not been capable of sustained wing flapping, it is puzzling how it was even able to fly but anatomical evidence that it flew is very strong. It had hollow bones, its wing bones were robust and very long, and it has marks on its bone, clearly showing it possessed flight feathers. This is unlike anything that is seen in birds that have evolved towards flightlessness. The prevailing theory is that like living condors, that it spent most of its airborne life finding and travelling between different updrafts. A study in 2007 found that despite being massive, they would have only sunk 1 meter per second while gliding, which is actually comparable to some living vultures like the black vulture. And many updrafts would easily be powerful enough to lift them, showing that they would not just be able to take to the skies, but were probably quite elegant flyers as well. However, the elegance would have only come once they were in the air, as takeoff and landing seems like it would have been quite problematic for them. The 2007 study argues that takeoff from flat land would have been very difficult because of their weight, but also that their wings would flap down twice their height. They probably would have needed to take off from a slope like a hand glider or jump from a cliff edge. Argentavis was probably primarily a mountain bird, where it would have been able to take off and land without incident, and also use the updrafts of the hills and mountains to stay in the air for long periods of time. 
and this lifestyle is very feasible, as this is how the Andean condor lives today, and most Argentavis specimens have been discovered in the foothills of the Andes, but some specimens are known from the lowland grasslands of Argentina as well, contradicting this theory. But the grasslands in Argentina are incredibly windy, so it may have been possible for Argentavis just to open its wings and be carried into the air by a strong gush of wind, as this is the way the albatross get into the air. It is thought that Argentavis's legs were strong and stout, which would have made them quite good at walking on the ground. This may have been an adaptation to cope with not being able to take off with ease. As they were restricted for where they could take flight from, they may have needed to travel to more desirable perches or hills before attempting a takeoff. They may have preferred being in the mountains due to more frequent updrafts, but as these were big birds, would have needed a lot of food and so would have occupied large territories. If there was more food in the grasslands, they would have headed there. Due to the difficulty in takeoff and landing these birds suffered, it is likely that it was not as much of a predator as the other pteratorns, and its eating habits probably leaned more towards living vultures. Also, because it was larger than even many land predators, it would have been able to steal prey from many carnivals in South America at the time, so why would it bother hunting if it had no need to most of the time? Why Argentavis went extinct is not understood, but it was probably due to climate change. Although small opportunistic scavengers tend to be among the most successful of all animals, large scavengers are the opposite and can actually be very vulnerable to changes in the ecosystem. For instance, most vulture species around the world at the moment are in decline, and this is because of humans, but also that they rely on there being a plentiful supply of big animals to fuel their food source, which are in decline at the moment. Although Argentavis went extinct about 6 million years ago, its smaller pteratorn family members lived on until much more recently, in the late Pleistocene and one of the survivors was known as Aeolornis, that was a giant bird as well, with a 5 meter wingspan. It probably lived in a similar way to Argentavis, but would have fed on the North American megafauna, like mammoths and elks, and it probably only went extinct during the megafaunal extinction, about 10,000 years ago. Meaning that this giant bird may have fed on the carcasses of animals that are still alive today. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video and would like to be notified of future content, then consider subscribing. A massive thank you goes to my patrons for supporting me, especially Greenfors and Fuzzleworth. If you would like to support me as well, then you can go to Patreon and make a pledge.